Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode. My name is Jeff Knight. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, and click the bell so that way you're notified every time I upload a new video. This is going to be another After Effects Studio with Jeff Knight. Now, if this is the first time you've seen this segment of my channel, basically what I do uh, is take two opposing ways of doing the same thing. I kind of look at them and kind of give my advice, my opinion on which one I think is the better method and why you should either never do the opposing method or why I just think mine's better. Maybe you use one method that I go over, maybe you use the other, maybe you use neither and didn't even know there was a difference. It doesn't matter, at the end of the day, you're gonna learn something new and this is intended to be more conversational and more casual. Please let me know in the comments below if this is something that you wanna see more of and if you got anything out of this After Effects Studio with Jeff Knight. So the topic I wanna go over today is drop shadows. So I'm gonna show you why I think you should always use layer style drop shadows instead of the effect drop shadow. So let's hop right in. Okay, so I have some images here. Well, actually I have some images and some footage. The main thing we wanna focus on is the size of this media. So I'm gonna bring in this media. So this right here is 1920 by 1080, which by the way, that is the size of our comp in case you're wondering. I'm gonna shrink this down to about maybe 30%. Okay, so now we have this next clip here, and this one is 4K, 3840 by 2160. I'm gonna bring that in, as, as we can see, it is double the size. So this first one, we scale down to 30%, so let's scale this one down to 15, so they're about the same size. So we have these two pieces of media, and we're gonna be adjusting the sizes of these. Okay, now we have this image here, and as we can see, this is 5472 by 3648. So this one is huge. So this is going to come down to maybe 10%. It looks like that about matches the other sizes. And then I have this tiny image that's 327 by 240. So let's bring that in and then I'm gonna maybe scale this up a little bit just so these are all kind of comparable. I'm gonna first add on a drop shadow using an effect. Effect, perspective, drop shadow. So if we bring this in, we're on this image right here. So this is our 6K footage. Now, here are some of our settings. I'm sure you've seen these if you've been doing After Effects for any amount of time and you've had to use a drop shadow. I'm just gonna kind of do some random values so that way we can kind of see what's going on here. I know this is 6K footage, so I have to kind of make the distance pretty big So in order for us to see it. So let's go maybe, we'll say 200 pixels distance and then the softness I'll make 300. So that way we have this soft drop shadow here. So now I want to copy this drop shadow, so Command or Control C. Now let's go over to this, which is our, I believe, 4K footage. Let me reveal it in our copy. Yeah, so this is our 4K footage. So I'm going to paste it there. As we can see, there's a little bit of a difference. We can already see this. If we kind of push in here and compare just the 6K with the 4K, uh, there's a little bit of difference in the distance that we're seeing uh, between these two images. So I'm gonna put that back over there. Now let's go to our 1920 by 1080 footage. And as we see, there's even more of a difference. You can really see it between the 6K and the 1920 by 1080. There's this huge, massive difference in the way these two drop shadows look. I'll move that back. And then finally, our small image, this is going to look really, really messed up. But see, this is our, how far away our drop shadow uh, is from our image and how soft it is. So the issue with this is if you had all of these assets in the same project and you needed to add a drop shadow to all of them, you would have to adjust each drop shadow because the way that this drop shadow works, it's relative to the size of the media that you're using. So it's not a great way of adding a drop shadow. It's like something that you can adjust the values of very quickly. So maybe if you have like one or two images, you may say, look, what's the difference? I'll just drop in a drop shadow like this. The thing is, using layer style drop shadows, you can do a lot more. So uh, let's start with this small image here. So I'm gonna take off this drop shadow, and then I'm gonna go to layer, layer styles, drop shadow. Okay, and now if we open up our drop shadow settings, we have this right here. You can notice out of the gate, you have a lot more options. With drop shadow, the effect, you just have shadow color, opacity, direction, distance, softness, and shadow only. And then the blending modes for layer styles, they're actually a lot like Photoshop. So if I pull up my Photoshop, you can see right here, a lot of these settings are very similar. So these are the Photoshop settings, and this is our layer style settings. Let me put these right next to each other. So they're not identical, but you have blend modes. So up in Photoshop, we have is defaults to multiply, same thing with our layer styles. We don't even have blend modes in the effect drop shadow. 
We also have, you know, opacity angle. Then we have the distance and spread and size, which is something that we don't have with the effect. We have distance and softness. Softness is kind of like a combination between uh, spread and size. And then, you know, Photoshop, of course, since it's really meant more for editing photos, it's going to have, you know, even more detailed settings. But the other two controls that Photoshop has that we do have in layer styles is this noise control and this layer knocks out drop shadow, which I kind of have a problem with. And we're going to go over at the end of this tutorial It's the last thing that we'll get to. But layer knocks out drop shadow. Spoiler does not work in After Effects. I don't know why it hasn't worked uh, since they've uh, incorporated it. If I'm wrong about this, let me know in the comments below. But from what I can tell, Layer Knocks Out Drop Shadow does not work in After Effects. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to our After Effects here. So just those differences alone would make me say, you know, it's probably a good idea to use the Layer Style Drop Shadow. You just have a lot more control over what you can do. But there's something that's even, I think, more important. Okay, so let me go ahead and set this up real quick. So we're on this small image up here, remember. Just get some settings to make this thing kind of look okay here and something that will get my point across. Okay, so maybe we'll use these settings here. So we have the distance is 50, size is 17. So that's the only thing I touched. Now you can copy this layer styles and apply it to the other to the other layers. So remember with our effect drop shadow, our drop shadows look totally different depending on the size of the media. So now watch this. If I select all of these and I go up to effect and then we can just remove all that way we can take them all off and then now let's paste so we're going to paste this layer style and as you can see this drop shadow is identical on all of these media assets it doesn't matter how big it is we have 6k footage here and we have an image here that is ridiculously small let me uh let me get that back real quick that is 327 by 240 and let's bring these up really close to each other so we can really see what's going on here. These two drop shadows are the same exact distance and the same softness, same spread as each other, and it does not even matter how big or small they are. So for that reason alone, I highly recommend using layer style drop shadows. Your results will just be a lot more consistent and a lot more precise. Now, I wanna also show you something that's kinda cool. One of the things that you don't get with uh, the effect drop shadows, we can see over here, are these blend modes. The blend modes are kind of cool. Like if I'm gonna turn this grunge layer here, this red grunge layer, and let me see, I'll focus on this footage right here. This is our 1920 by 1080 uh, media. Uh, where is that? Okay, so it's right here. So now if I open up this layer styles, I'm gonna close up these other things here, open up drop shadow, and also I'll open up this blending options. Now see, you can change these blend modes to get different results. So some of them don't look a lot different, but when you start to get into things like color burn, you can see there's a definite difference. You can do some really cool things with this. Overlay is gonna have a much different effect uh, than normal. Uh, you have multiply, uh, that looks pretty close to normal, I believe. Yeah, that looks pretty close. But the point is you have all of these different options here. So you can get a lot more looks just by using layer style drop shadows. One of the things also that's kind of cool about this, I'm gonna, let me see, I'm gonna grab this drop shadow and I'm gonna put it onto my dancing guy. I'm going to solo this. That way we're just focused on this guy right here. Let me set this back to normal. One of the other things that's kind of cool is, okay, if I take off this layer styles and we're going to use the drop shadow, the effect drop shadow. Now watch what happens as I start to rotate this image. If you watch the drop shadow, actually, let me see. I'll make this a lot darker so you can see it better. Maybe bring the softness down a little bit. Uh, as you can see, as we rotate this, the, the drop shadow stays kind of in the same place. Uh, it's just very kind of static. It's not organic. It doesn't really move with the image. So if you have your direction set to 135, no matter how you rotate it, it's always going to be at that 135 angle. And, you know, and obviously it doesn't matter what angle you, you, you use. It's the, the, the principle of it. As you rotate this, you know, it's going to kind of stay at that same angle. And that may be okay, but watch this. If you use the layer style drop shadow and you start to rotate it, and now one of the things that's important is this use global light. I have it off, and I'll kind of talk about that in a second. But now if we start to rotate this, we can see it's almost kind of like we have a light that's kind of like, you know, over in the top left. Our drop shadow is always going to kind of go down this direction, no matter how we, we have it. It's a more organic kind of drop shadow. 
And then now let's turn on our global light. And if we turn on our global light, it's going to use the global light angle from the blending options. So as we move this around, uh, this layer style will use this global light angle uh, as a source. So as we start to rotate it, uh, it will use uh, it will use that value to cast our drop shadow. And you can definitely see the difference if we turn this off and on. So my recommendation is to use the layer style drop shadow. You just have a lot more options. There's a lot more you can do. And also this layer knocks out drop shadow. Let me address this really quick. Okay, so I kind of scoured uh, the internet, not really scoured, it's been about 10 minutes, kind of looking this up because I cannot get any results. And I came across this, and I think this is the best description of what it's supposed to do. So in Photoshop, layer knocks out drop shadow. If you have transparent objects on top of the shadow, this option stops or allows the shadow to show through the object. This option works with the fill option on the layers panel. In the example below, I set both of the text layers fill to 0%. So basically, layer knocks out drop shadow. If that option is chosen, what it's basically saying is that you can have the drop shadow only, which ironically is an option in the uh, drop shadow effect. As you can see over here, shadow only, you have that option. I'll click that on in just a second. I just wanted to show you this, that layer knocks out drop shadow, basically shows the shadow only, and it ignores the layer. I couldn't get it to work, so I did some more scouring, and as you can see, layer knocks out drop shadow has no effect, is uh, a topic in, uh, it looks like this blog. The layer styles drop shadow switch to knock out layers from the drop shadow seems to have no effect. Is it broken? And as you can see, June 17th, 2019, three years ago, uh, I don't know if they just haven't bothered to fix this or address it, or these figure not that many people are using it in After Effects, I don't know. It's unfortunate that it's an option in After Effects and you can't actually use it. Because there have been some times I have wanted to use the shadow only. So let's see what that looks like. If we take off this layer styles, turn back on our drop shadow. Now see if I use shadow only, if we take that on, we get the shadow only. And I'm assuming that's what this layer knocks out drop shadow is intended to do. And if you need that effect for whatever reason, then I think you'd have to use the effect perspective drop shadow option. But overall, my assessment is use layer styles drop shadow. You have so many more options and not just that, but you get a more consistent look no matter how big your, uh, your media is, no matter how small it is, no matter what combination you have, uh, they will always look very consistent and it just makes for a better design. So let me know in the comments below if this is something you agree with. Uh, maybe you're just more in love with the effect drop shadow and you think I don't know what I'm talking about or you have an argument uh, for why you should use it but the layer styles drop shadow has a lot more options and I recommend that you explore it and see what you can come up with let me know in the comments below if this is something that you enjoy and you want to see more of thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time I hope this tutorial helped you out and that you learned something new and useful Make sure to come back next time for another tutorial that will expand your knowledge of After Effects while also teaching you some really cool tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Support our channel by getting your 7-Minute AE merch today at our online store. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, is guaranteed to make you a Shape Layer Rockstar. The link to that course, to our 7-Minute AE store, and the project files for this episode are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>